If you're looking for small, short, and light, but you're tall and not short and not light like me, <laughs> stay tuned. I got a winner. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bish's RV in the back lot here in Coldwater, Michigan at my hometown store with a new copy of the 192 Freedom Express. And like I said, if you are taller, but you want a smaller RV, but you don't want your toes to hang off the end of the bed so that Ted, Ned, and Fred the Bed Goblin Union don't rip your toes off. You, you know those guys that live under the bed, right? Or if you don't want to constantly bang your head inside the skylight of the shower, this right here, this might be one of the very few campers that meets all those requirements. It is barely over 4,300 pounds dry weight, so a ton of vehicles could tow this. It has a maximum fully loaded uh, weight rating of about 6,000 pounds. So once again, there are uh, potentially, this would be about the biggest thing that I think a lot of tow package midsize pickups might handle. And this is kind of with the body size starting to push that, but half tons with the tow package, generally speaking, almost all day long. Bigger tow package SUVs like a tow package Yukon might be an option here. So something where you may not need to give up your daily driver to have a comfortable little camper to, to go out in. The thing is, I could see this being just as good as a couple's model as just a solo camper. Maybe just you and the dog or you and the cat or something like that. I could see this being an awesome like single ladies camper. Uh, sorry, Beyonce, single ladies, don't, don't sue me. Anyway, uh, if, if you like this one, you should put a ring on it. <laughs> but we have double Asdale walls. Um, factory tire pressure monitoring, this is actually so short in total length that you really can't put the wide stance stability axles on these that you find on most Freedom Expresses. It actually just wouldn't ride right. Um, it still has that cool vaulted bed system, which on this one could sort of operate like a little bit of a Murphy dinette. Now I'm reaching a little bit for that, but the idea is there. I think you'll see what I mean as we go. It's got a couple hiccups, it's got a couple hangups, but overall, I like this thing and I'd love to hear what you think about it. And if you appreciate the good with the bad, hit that subscribe button. Let's rock, baby. And I'm gonna break normal form and rank today. And I'm gonna do something I don't normally do. I'm gonna start this one in road mode because I actually think it's one of its best qualities. So right from the door, uh, obviously getting to the refrigerator on the left, not a problem. The bathroom straight ahead or as Creedence Clearwater Revival didn't say, there's a bathroom on the right. But with the slide closed, you can absolutely easily walk through this camper access all of the kitchen stuff you uh you have room to go between the slide out and that true queen bed up front you never need to open the slide on this one uh at, at a travel stop you just really enjoy the space you get when you get there because despite only being a very shallow maybe i don't know 12 14 inch slide out it's crazy the open sense of space that that grants you. Now the high color contrast and the higher ceilings also kind of play into that uh, a little bit. They've done a couple little kind of, uh, well, in, in the horse world that I actually grew up and call it running lead changes, where they've changed a few things kind of on the fly in these from the beginning of the 23 camping season already. Um, there are a few minor features, but I think you're going to like what you see. But one of the major things to talk about on this one is right there, Right up front, we're gonna take a look at that right away, that 60 by 80 inch true queen bed. Very few small campers with a layout like this have that size bedding up front. It's not a Murphy bed, it's not something that's gonna bend, it's not something where you gotta make the bed every day, every night, that's about it. But if you notice, this floor plan really relies on that front skylight to uh, provide some lighting in there. Um, it, it just kind of feels like maybe one ceiling light between that overhead cabinet and that uh, roof vent, that might be kind of handy right there. Now that is just a, a, a general vent. It's not a powered vent fan or anything like that. A little look at my elbow in the bedroom mirror. You also see that down below here, we got the pooch palace. We got the perfect little place for your four-legged furry friend to uh, retreat and enjoy. And I don't know why I'm stressing things quite that hard, but Apparently, I feel very strongly about it. Now, one of the things I like to do, let me sit down here um, at the sofa and give you kind of a view from the driver's seat. Now, that TV can pivot around. We'll probably get a look at that at some point, unless I forget, which I am uh, inclined to do from time to time. Notice, though, when we sit down here, suddenly that front windshield in this open bedroom design, it really helps make up for the fact that we have not zero, but limited campsite windows, and it makes this little trailer not look or feel 
quite so little. That's one of the things that I really like about this one. Now, something I was sad to see go, they used to have a little built-in kind of wastebasket over there, but instead of that built-in wastebasket, what they basically did here is they kind of changed and expanded on the, uh, the kitchen space a little bit. And while we're looking at that kitchen, one of the things that I want to mention, remember those little kind of tweak the, uh, you know, tighten the screws details that they changed on the fly here. One of the things I'm really happy to report that uh, I've already recorded a bunch of Freedom Expresses this year where this had not yet been done. Um, they, uh, they've gone to a split sink cover instead of a one piece, which is, uh, it's, you know, uh, that, that farm sink. It's really nice to have that kind of, uh, you know, space and function up there. Now, this is also, again, a six foot nine ceiling, not a, uh, a shorter ceiling. Uh, like you commonly find in this, or a shorter sidewall, I should say, because there's a lot of RVs that have um, roughly the same total interior height, but they accomplish that by giving us a vaulted ceiling, where this one is just literally bigger all the way through, which means maximum-sized slide and everything else. Now, real quick note, today we are looking at a gas-electric two-way refrigerator freezer. Some of our stores stock these, some of ours stock the um, standard 10.7 cubic foot 12-volt DC compressor fridge, being a park camping Midwestern boy, I would probably go with the 12-volt the fridge, but I'm kind of curious. As we look at the storage here, let me know which one you would go with and, and why. Keeping in mind that you can get a factory solar package with these. Now, taller ceiling means taller cabinets as well. See that split sink uh, cover just above the utensil drawer. And working our way past, you got triple drawers galore on your way over to that, uh, that true queen bed. Uh, notice though, you've got storage all around that, above it, below it. You've got the dresser drawers that pop out. And like I said, this can kind of be sort of like a Murphy dinette. And like I said, I know that I'm kind of reaching a little bit when I say that. But the fact is, like, if there's just one or two of you, I do think that if you're stuck inside on a rainy day, you can kind of leverage and regain the otherwise lost, um, living space that a full-time fixed bed creates. So, like, it's not a Murphy bed, but it's kind of a Murphy bed thing, you know? If it, Like, I, I don't know. But the cool thing is, like, if you want to swap this out for a, a different queen bed, you could do so. Like, Murphy beds don't often allow you some different bedding choices like this would. Now, today we're looking at the cloud decor versus storm, which is a, a darker fabric. So, basically, you see the darker piping on this? Essentially, if you uh, if you inverted the color palette on the sofa, that's what the storm decor is versus cloud. And the uh, the little um, pillows right there, well, those don't change. Notice too, you had that free floating table that could you could use in uh, Murphy dinette mode or Dinofa mode. You could also use that to uh, defend yourself from the gas station murder hobos. What come and get you? And Notice that in the little fold-down cinema-style uh, armrest over here, you do have some USB plugs uh, as well. Now, try to proactively answer this one for you, because I think we're going to get a lot of questions. I think some people are going to say, Ooh, can I get that with a theater seat? No, it's physically not possible here. Because if you notice, you see the little um, carpeted bit just under here, under the sofa? That's actually the bottom of the slide. If you tried to put a theater seat in this, your feet would be dangling off the ground, and uh, your, your head would be in those, uh, eating those overhead cabinets up there. A little bit of a headbanger action. I've been much of a headbanger since I used to play guitar in the Silver Michigan Rock Band. But now I don't want to begin again this way. I still got neck issues and, and bad hearing. By the way, kids, don't be cool when you're young, when you're dumb. I love loud music. Wear some ear protection. Just a word of advice from your Uncle Josh. Anyway, let me get back on track. Um, this is above the wheel well. The wheel well actually sticks up into the camper a little bit. So a theater seat's just not possible here. The good news, if you check the links in the video description, I got a couple others with a similar layout that could do that for you. So like I said, the camper has some excellent qualities and it's got a couple very significant points of concern, drawbacks, potential deal breakers. And I think we might be about to take a look at another one. And I don't mind acknowledging that stuff. I want you to understand what you're really getting for your money here. Like, if you take a look up in the shower, there's awesome headroom up in here. But radius showers, they can be a little bit light on elbow space. I do like the full medicine cabinet storage chest. Uh, well, storage medicine cabinet, you know what I mean, right? It's not just a mirror on the wall. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, this is a small bathroom, though, and they really packed a lot of stuff in here. If you notice, I'm not wide. I am long-legged. 
it's tight for somebody of my size and stature. If you're a bigger, fluffier person, that might be a problem for you. I really recommend trying to try it on like a, like a pair of pants. Try it on for size sometime. But you notice that behind that, there's a really nice linen cabinet space there. So, like I said, they've done some good things. They've done some things that maybe don't work for everybody, but typically they've done what they could where they could. And I'd kind of be curious to know before we step outside, what do you think of her so far? All right, so first and foremost, as we step outside here, let's talk towing. Again, 6,000 pounds maximum weight, uh, not an extremely long length and tandem axles. Those are some fantastic features and qualities for larger class SUV half ton towing. This, depending on where you live and your experience level, and uh, you know a few other factors like um, you know the terrain that you're driving through regularly. This may or may not be a decent fit for something like a uh, a mid-sized tow package pickup, like a uh, Ford freaking Ranger or something like that. Um, that being said, there will be like if you live in a mountain area or something like that, I I don't think that this would necessarily be a good fit for the aforementioned Ford freaking Ranger. Now, in the top of that pass-through compartment, you saw a little cardboard box. Look to the right-hand side of the screen and you'll see what was in there. Handy little picnic table uh, included with this camper right here. She has double Asdell sidewalls, all Freedom Express, actually all laminated Coachmans have since the uh, beginning of the 2021 model year, as opposed to calendar year, not always the exact same thing. They put the biggest awning on this one they could. I think it's only about 14 feet though. It's not a giant awning, but it's not a big camper. But if you notice, they basically ran it from the rear wall right up to that big front pass-through compartment um, that, you know, they, they really couldn't have given you any more space on this thing uh, in terms of awning space. Now, over here, you've got your little griddle-in station that is uh, all included with the camper. Your uh, outdoor picnic table goes hand-in-hand -hand with this thing right there. And uh, this, ironically, doesn't have the smallest kitchen prep space of all the Freedom Expresses, despite being their smallest travel trailer. But that outdoor picnic table and cooking station, that will be a very handy beneficial thing. Uh, as I mentioned previously, giving you a little more peace of mind, this does come with its own factory TPMS. And frankly, uh, TPMS, guys, I don't even know if I could spell that if I tried. And sometimes, like, I, I don't wanna seem like I'm talking down or mansplaining in here. Um, Sometimes people ask me, what, what's TPMS? Like, not if I didn't work in this industry, I'm not sure I would know. Tire pressure monitoring system. So when you're going down the road, if you have low uh, tire pressure in one of your tires or something like that, it'll just kind of chirp at you with a little separate handheld monitor and give you an idea of like, hey, uh, you might want to start pulling over or finding, you know, uh, air somewhere for your tires or something like that. Just a nice, easy little peace of mind feature. And it's it's one less thing that's constantly chirping at your cell phone. Although there's some advantages to having that stuff all integrated onto your phone too. They just use a, uh, a whole separate system. Little details like this though. These are things that I really, really like on Freedom Express is how all of your hookups are kind of centralized in one place over here. You know, your full hot, cold outside utility shower, your uh, cable and satellite hookups, black tank flush, all of that all in one spot. Now, again, telling you the good with the bad. I do want to point out the RV is not at all leveled right now. The tongue of the RV is up a little bit, which makes the tail a little bit lower than it otherwise could be. But if you're noticing um, that, that the sewer hookup on this one is uh, fairly low, this is definitely going to be a uh, only on the beaten paths and paved roads kind of camper right here. Because the whole thing rides on a, a smaller, lighter chassis, it hugs the ground a little bit uh, already organically. Now, this is one of those interesting kind of, they 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 did almost like a, a mid early-ish 23 update already. If you're looking at that, that chassis looks like it is prepped and ready to be able to add a, uh, a receiver hitch on the back of it. Uh, that is something that I'm actually really glad to see. Like that's something that Rockwood does a good job of where they give you a, uh, a rear hitch and a rear bumper instead of or. And it's those little details like the split sink covers. Like you can see where Freedom Express is taking notes like in real time and saying, okay, you know, we think our campers are pretty good. But we see those, the you know, the the point that you're making there. We think we could make it a little better. And they're reacting and they're responding um, kind of like, you know, on the fly, effectively. But that's the thing. You can see that these are made by people who actually go camping for people who actually go camping. But 
Maybe this one has a couple qualities that don't exactly enthuse you. What if you prefer a theater seat? We've got a couple of things like some Rockwoods that, or Cougar with a very similar layout that might work very well for you. If you prefer a king bed, take a look at that Cougar or a uh, North Trail. Um, if you're kind of just wanting to see what else might be out there, Rockwood and Flagstaff make a very close approximation to this. And if you kind of take all those things and mash them all together, well, that's sort of where the Ember version of this comes in. So as you can see, there's a lot of different brands that build something very similar to this. What's really cool about that is it really lets you pick the one that is like more finely tuned to exactly what you're looking for. And that's why I put these videos together to kind of show you where each of them shine and maybe where each of them fall short just a little bit. And if you like that kind of approach, hit that subscribe button. Let us know you're out there. Leave me a little hashtag nerd herd in the comment section if you're a returning uh, member of the RV nerd herd. And either way, thank you for joining us today. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.